Good morning, everybody. Today is Saturday, January 29th, 2022. God bless you. I hope you slept well. I hope you're ready for the weekend whenever you're seeing this. If you take a look outside, I try to get a decent view. This is the backyard slash, you know, a little bit of woods out there. You can see there is some snow and that's because yesterday on the 28th, Friday, we did have a bit of snow come through. It was only about one to two inches from my relative calculation just by looking outside the window and that is that that's the fourth time it snowed this year and here in northern virginia this is not normal so i have a word to bring forth to you it's a, a little bit longer than normal i will try to read it um, a little bit quicker it is from a new voice that i have not mentioned here but this person and his wife have been on elijah streams before maybe not recent but they have been on there before <clears throat> And uh, the, this uh, prophetic voice, his name is Nate Johnson. And so I'm going to read you a quick bio. Before I do that, just a, just a quick announcement. For those of you who have been trying to catch up on the teachings under my playlist, where it says Bible study teachings, under the playlist you will find the teachings I had back in December 2021, which were uh, at the Lord's command on john 14 15 16 and 17 those are super rich if you haven't seen them definitely check them out put them on your list <clears throat> the main teachings that we are all aiming to finish by the end of january are the teachings that the lord commanded prophet mike thompson out in las vegas and the lord told him to read Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. I know some of you are catching up. Um, take your time. Don't, um, don't feel overwhelmed. Just take your time. Listen. Do the teachings. I will be putting up several prophetic words this weekend, just taking advantage of the time that I have, um, a little more free than usual. And so don't worry. Things may seem like they're piling up, but just do the teachings let's get on track with that so so that in february as february uh, begins we are ready to launch however that's going to look we're going to be ready and god knows that you're putting your your efforts and so don't be down on yourself don't get discouraged don't get sad rejoice in the lord for the joy of the lord is your strength and in the presence of god there is fullness of joy at his right hand pleasures forevermore the devil will tr always try to to get you outside of the joy of god so it's up to you whether you let him or not know that you have control over that and use that control to build up your confidence in a good way and to just basically tell the devil to shut up to go bother someone who cares or use that self-control if you're strong in that area i know not many people are but self-control and ignore him ignore him like a like a disobedient <laughs> two-year-old okay nothing against children i'm just saying the time that there are temper tantrums and you know children act a certain way and it is uncalled for or what what not as a parent you know many times you have to ignore them um, and so i experienced that when i was a teacher you had to ignore just to get through and you keep your peace and guess what they learn so the devil same thing the demons same thing all right <clears throat> all right we're gonna get into this word i just wanted to make sure that you guys will continue with the teachings and that you don't get discouraged at any point um, also, uh, just a quick reminder, because this morning I woke up after greeting the Lord and inviting him into my day, I checked my phone and I noticed that there were, um, two more spam accounts, two more fake Christian accounts that were pretending, um, to be actual, the actual ministries that the Lord is actually using. And these people, once again, are comment, leaving comments in my videos 
and they are you know they're sounding all spiritual i mean it's pretty ridiculous you can see right through them saying oh beloved this and that and you know the i see this this issue with you and the lord wants to give you a solution etc so please you know uh, sow a seed or send a donation to nigerian orphanage etc etc and then they leave a phone number which should be the flag if someone leaves their phone number report the user there's a little button little option give them a thumbs down report the user um maybe leave me a comment and say hey brian fyi someone's leaving this etc all right and i will go in and i will uh, swiftly as best i can take care of it and at the same time speak with your mouth say lord i send the fear of the lord upon that person and those people doing this in jesus name do it because those people obviously have no fear of God and they need to feel the fear of God that they may get saved. So if they dare come against God's people who are doing his work, well, then may the spirit of the fear of the Lord come upon them. It won't hurt them, but it will. It, they will never forget it. Praise the Lord. And Lord, we need the spirit of the fear of the Lord. That's something that we also, that's one of the seven spirits, Isaiah eleven two, that the Lord speaks of so. Anyway, that is that. Um, any other reminders? Um, oh, definitely um, remember, if you are enjoying the videos, make sure you are subscribed. I just checked subscribers, and we are going up. Praise the Lord. It is moving steadily. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your presence, Father. Oh, the Lord is happy. <laughs> the Lord is happy about that. Thank you, Father. So I bless all of you who are subscribers. If you're not subscribed yet, you've seen at least two videos. You've enjoyed the content at any point. Maybe God has spoken something to help you. Then just hit subscribe. It's absolutely free for you, and it helps this channel. And I don't know what's going on with YouTube algorithm, but I will tell you the analytics over the last week have been all over the place. And I literally just yesterday I was looking at the subscriber list and I refreshed and it went down like 20. I mean, how in the world does that happen? I don't know what's what's going on here, but uh, I am imploring that the Lord come against the thief in any way, shape and form that comes against us. So definitely your likes and more so your comments, the more comments, the more the video was, were spread more subscribers that is very helpful all right so thank you for uh hearing me on that and now let's get into the prophetic word <clears throat> oh father we invite you thank you lord jesus thank you holy spirit we are full of joy we are full of peace we are full of love we embrace your embrace we are accepted we are beloved we receive this word now father we thank you in advance for the confirmation we will hear i'm sure we will hear it because you are so good you outdo yourself all the time at least in our eyes we thank you father for nate and christy johnson in jesus name this is the short bio nate johnston is a prophetic voice and worshiper who has a heart to see sons and daughters unleashed into passionate friendship with God and an effective supernatural lifestyle. Through his ministry school, Everyday Revivalists, he leads people from the basics of the gospel through to being sent and released into their mission field, as well as championing and raising up emerging prophetic voices around the world. His burning cry and desire is to see the body of Christ become a beacon for the lost by raising up a generation that walks in love and power of God, representing him well. Yes, Lord. Nate and his wife, Christy, have three daughters, Charlotte, Sophie, and Ava, and live in Redding, California. By the way, Nate Johnston is actually on uh, Instagram, pretty active. And I have, um, I have a sister in Christ whom I've never met out in California. Uh, her family and my wife and I are friends, virtual friends. <laughs> and she recommends a lot of uh, his words and she'll tag me and so forth. And they are very, very encouraging. So I highly recommend. Um, and you can find out more at nateandchristy.co. Okay, and I'll leave that in the description for you all as well. All right, let's get into this powerful word. 
this word has the date of January 18th, 2022. Nate Johnston, and the title is You Are a People with a Storm in Your Mouths. Now that is interesting. All right, first subheader. Just like the last two years, that's in a question format, leading up to 2022 and even now i have felt such an anticipation about this year people have asked me one question in a myriad of different ways but the question is essentially is this year going to go well or will it be like the last two years after sitting with the lord and letting the dreams visions and conversations marinate let me answer this question by simply saying this year god's heart is to see the church rise there's that word again rise as the mighty bride she is called to be we have the authority and we are under the sorry and we are the rudder of the ship distraction divisions and sneaky games have cost us our power and effectiveness and bowing to culture and the media's lies has has silenced our voices but no more i pray this doesn't just give you information for you to add to your 2022 word repertoire but that it's a word which encourages you shakes you to your bones ignites your spirit and sends you running into the year with a con courageous and undignified roar of righteous vengeance all right so obviously this um, article, this transcription has that date, which I mentioned, but was written beforehand. So it's still very recent. The next, um, the next subheader says, prophets in hiding. But if I say, this is Jeremiah 20, verse 9, the Lord speaking. But if I say, I will not... Sorry, this is, a, yes, this is the Lord speaking through Jeremiah. But if I say, I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. And that was a time when Jeremiah was being persecuted and he was regretting speaking for the Lord and he was having a... Um, I guess a bit of a fit and um, I know I've had a similar fit maybe, maybe not about speaking up or whatnot but about something similar yeah so all right let's continue <clears throat> before I get into the main word I have to highlight this for the last few years many voices have gone into hiding for many it was during the initial lockdown of 2020 when the enemy started spinning his web taking many off course into prophetic diversions and down rabbit holes designed to silence them. Remember what we spoke about? Um, we spoke about being in the, the, the decade of the mouth. Okay. Now we've touched on that. We're in the Hebrew year five, seven, eight, two now, but when we entered in 2020, it coincided with the Hebrew year five, seven, eight, zero. So the year of the 80s in the Hebrew calendar is the year of the decade because eight symbolizes the Hebrew letter and character called Pei, which represents the mouth, the voice, speaking up, etc. So this is, again, the masks came in in 2020. So you see how everything lines up? <coughs> Okay, then the greatest assault of stifling came a year ago during the inauguration when the church and the media chased the prophets into hiding. The domino effect from that has been more catastrophic than we realize. Where is the word of the Lord if the prophets don't prophesy? <laughs> By now you should be thinking of Hank Kuhneman and thinking of Robin Bullock, thinking of Johnny Enlow, and Kat Kerr, and Nathan French, Manuel Johnson, Amanda Grace, and others as well, because the 
because they are the ones standing on the forefront, just as many others and, and many of us, saying we cannot be silent, right? Because they see the Lord has shown them what the enemy is trying to do. And so they, being seasoned in the Lord, are standing up and declaring it. And people like you, like you yourself and myself, are taking it in. Okay, and then the Lord has me speaking it out as well, because I may, uh, uh, the Lord may reach through me a certain, um, a certain number of you know, certain people that maybe the others will not reach. So see, we work in tandem, we work together, and it's all working for Jesus, for His glory. That's the difference, right? <clears throat> and so the lion has roared. Who will not fear? The sovereign Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? That's Amos 3.8. We have been in what has felt like a global holding pattern as the nations inevitably face the results of a church stuck in the mud of warfare, religion, and cultural pressure while fighting the fires of the enemy's sideshow games instead of the real battle at hand. But that is all about to change. Next subheader, storm tossed and tired. This is Isaiah 54, 11. I love how he, he starts out with the scripture and then he expands from the wisdom God has given him. Um, and he is on the younger side of the prophetic voices, which is awesome. <clears throat> o afflicted one, storm tossed and not comforted. Behold, I will set your stones in antimony, and your foundations I will lay in sapphires. Yes, we have been in the storm. We have all felt the relentless winds of the storm, the pressure, the constant lies and mind games of the enemy. In the last two years, as the enemy has tried to break us on all fronts, he has blown in strange, unexpected problems. In addition to the butterfly effect of the global crisis, we have all felt in an attempt to subtly wear us down and cause us to forget who we are. Amen. Remember, it's all about identity. But while at times it may have seemed like the enemy succeeded, the Holy Spirit has faithfully taken, taken us into Elijah in the cave moments and reminded us of who we are. We are at a global moment right now where God is dangling, dangling the keys of authority, sonship, and access to the church saying it's time to get up and break out of this confined space notice he's talking about keys and authority keys and authority go together and you remember we've read about that in isaiah 22 22 which coincides with the year 2022 and so there we go and now he has a scripture ha look at that I will place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. Isaiah 22, 22. Hallelujah. Next subheader. <clears throat> Empty buckets and fresh infilling. As I was praying into 2022, I was drawn into drawn to this image of an empty bucket god kept showing me and knew right away that this bucket represented the season of endless storms the emptying and the reset we have been through in the last two years the bucket represented a season of extreme emptying out in preparation for something new to fill that same space at the wedding feast of cana oh very cool i remember i just had a um transcription that i did of a prophetic word from hank kuneman and he the lord was talking about the wedding of cana so let's see if that relates either way at least that same story that same um part of the bible is being spoken which is pretty awesome and if you haven't seen that i will try to remember to link it down below as well at the wedding feast in cana they had to reach empty before the miracle of turning water into wine could happen in 2021, we saw the bottom of the, that bucket corporately and personally. 
Many of you felt at rock bottom, like there was nowhere further down to go. Many of you found yourself spiritually, emotionally, and physically spent. Like you were waiting for a collapse to take place, but God preserved you. Remember that. But God is so faithful. God preserved you because something was coming that you didn't see. You even said, I feel like I don't have much left. And this couldn't be more true because you have been living on the manna of a revelation and encounter that has sustained you throughout that season. But now it's time to step into something new. Maybe you have entered into 2022 still staring at the bottom of that old bucket, but don't be fooled. There is an infilling coming that is so powerful. It is going to fill you up again and cause you to overflow. You will look back at the year that depleted you and realize it was the year that made the way for you to walk into such an outpouring of the spirit both personally and through to the world around you that is what keeps that's what should keep us going not only knowing that god works everything for his good right romans eight twenty eight, but knowing that god is faithful and that he always wins and if we, we if we will just hold on to his coattails clinging to his leg like a little kid and you know as he walks around <laughs> he's carrying us however you want to imagine it cling to jesus right and that's what it talks about uh, abiding in him remaining in him john 15 now even though we can hold on to that there is something more we can hold on to which is what god has been speaking through his prophets and though the timing we don't know we know it is upon us it is so close and it is that outpouring of his spirit and glory and we know this year 2022 lines up with the scripture acts 2 22 signs miracles and wonders and they are coming so we should hold on to that focus on the good right amen all right, the next subheader, breaking the curses, slander, and ending the gag order. Because 2021 was such a year of private battles and chatter, God has been working hard to get you healed of the bites and the stings. He has been trying to unstick you where the enemy slimed you, stunted you, and derailed you. This was a year where you felt like your hair was cut and you lost yourself, caught up in endless distractions and battles. But now it's time to leave that place. 2021 was a year of restriction and spiritual bullying. Oof, that is true. It felt like everything you said came under scrutiny and criticism. It was a year of constant muzzling and suppression of the mighty voice that God was awakening. If you haven't already shaken off the snake into the fire as Paul did, shake off the fear of man and the witchcraft of the critics. If you have been silenced in the last year, today you need to break off the muzzle and curses sent your way. What came to harm you will not kill you or kill your destiny. No, it will not. Shake it off. Now you remember the, uh, the, the prophetic word the Lord gave me just going into 2022 the title was shake it off um and you know what i will try my best to link that in the description as well for those of you who may be new and have not seen it um also by the way there is another playlist that says uh prophetic words given to me by god or from god and so i will have all the prophetic words in order um well, you'd have to sort them yourself. I believe I sorted them, but you can just check and they should be in order. All right. Shake it off. Shake off the betrayal. Shake off the poison. I command the muzzle over your voice to break off and the gag order to end now in Jesus name. Right now, God is cleaning off the slime that was hurled at you. Amen, Lord. We come into agreement with that declaration. The next subheader, anticipating a second win. <clears throat> a few days after that, I was in worship when I suddenly heard the Lord say, 
tell them to prophesy. The answer is in their mouths. The future is in their mouths. Whoa. Speak what I am doing, not what you see in the natural. For many have stopped prophesying, and the word must go out. Prophesy, my bride, prophesy. Wow. Straight away after this, it was like I was feeling and sensing the hearts of so many believers around the world who just felt disillusioned and faith tired. Maybe even reading this, you felt a sting of it. I get it. I really do. But God is about to give us a second wind where we have felt empty and discouraged from the last two years of standing without results yet. Your bucket is, has been empty. Your belly has not felt like it has had rivers flowing from it. But soon it will. Maybe you've been through the storm and it has left you feeling flat. Maybe you have contended and done everything you could do, but you have been severely discouraged, not seeing breakthrough or any advancement at all. But the second wind is coming. And it's not going to be some light change but a major life interruption that shifts everything inside you and around you. Lord, we welcome that. Oof. All right. We have just crossed the halfway point. Stay with me. It gets stronger. The next subheader, a people with a storm in their mouths. What the Lord said next shocked me. He said, you are a people with a storm in your mouths. At first, I honestly had no clue what he was saying. A storm? Aren't storms from the enemy? I thought. Then I found this scripture, Jeremiah 23, verse 19. Behold, the storm of the Lord has gone forth in wrath, even, in, even a whirling tempest. It will swirl down on the head of the wicked. Then another scripture, Ezekiel 37, verse 4 to 13. God is the creator of storms like he is the one who... Sorry, I jumped, I jumped ahead there. Let me read this. God is the creator of storms like he is the one who, in Isaiah 54, creates a destroyer to destroy the enemy's plans. You can't beat that. But what's a storm in a mouth mean, Lord? I asked. Then I was led to a very familiar passage. And this is the scripture. It applies. Ezekiel 37, 4 to 13. And normally I wouldn't read it, but I'm going to read it because I believe many of you receive <clears throat> by the anointing, by the frequency, by the vibration that is created by God, not the devil. Okay, God is the original, or the one who spoke life into existence, right? There was a vibration and a frequency. God is the author of it, not the devil. Let me say that again. And so there is a frequency and vibration in the anointing that goes forth. And this is why someone can speak something and all of a sudden you receive revelation. You're like, whoa, but they, it sounds like they didn't even say anything that fancy. Well, it's because it's not them. It's the Holy Spirit in them. It's the anointing that God has placed on them and is working through them. This, this is what happens to me in particular when I listen to Kevin Zadai. Like, my God. Praise the Lord. All right, so the scripture, this is what it says. Ezekiel 37, 4 to 13. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, 
and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Whoa. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. Say, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live and i will settle you in your land then you will know that i the lord have spoken and i have done it declares the lord wow hmm. now some of you have heard the song called rattle by elevation worship and if you haven't i am again going to try to remember and i'm going to link that video which of course is not mine I will link it so that you can check it out um, and listen to the words. It is, it's awesome. They have a part at the very end where they, where you have a group of the singers and they're saying they're shouting, "Live, live, dry bones hear the word of the Lord, live," and it goes on, which is very cool. So use that as praise. Use that to get you pumped up and filled with joy. Use whatever tools you have and worship the Lord. You'd be amazed at how strong you become spiritually by worshiping God, by praising him, where you're focusing only on him and his goodness and not on the doom and gloom, who could be the Antichrist and what's happening at the round, around and what Biden is doing and Illuminati and all that garbage. Yes, I'm speaking from experience because I was there and the Lord took me out of there. So I most definitely am going to testify. And I see you, demonic spirit. I bind you in Jesus' name. I cast you out. Get out of this house. You're not welcome here. And you are forbidden to return in Jesus' name. <clears throat> so see, the enemy appearing by black spots here. But he's not permitted here. All right. Let us continue. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for leading this entire video. What can we discover here? The word of the Lord is the storm in our mouths. It's the spirit of God moving upon us. And through our prophecies, which releases the resurrection power of God into the earth that counteracts the storms of the enemy. Have you, sorry, you have a storm in your mouth. Have you forgotten it? We have seen the storms of the enemy, but I believe we have entered a time where God is revealing his power and glory that will outdo the storms we have seen in the past few years. Do I think the enemy will keep sending his storms in 2022? Absolutely. But it's time for us to know who we are and that we are not helpless to change the things we see. Amen. It's time for the church to determine the weather instead of always being the cleanup crew after a tornado rolls in. We are the head, not the tail, right? <clears throat> All right, this is the last subheader, and then there is a closing declaration. The year the bride speaks up. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. That's Isaiah 49, 2. Just before Christmas, I was in worship when I saw a glimpse of the scene where Esther approaches the king in Esther, chapter 5. What is it, Queen Esther? The king asked her. Whatever you want, even to the half even to half the kingdom will be given to you. Ezra, Esther 5, verse 3. Just as Esther went through the long season of refining and purification to prepare 
her for her divine appointment, now it's time for you to come before the king and lift your voice. We have seen evil after evil and the demonic agenda after agenda. Now it's time to see Haman hung on his gallows and justice done. This is an hour where the church can't be silent. I'm going to say it again. This is an hour where the church can't be silent. This is a moment where we can't hide in fear of our, for our lives, but need to boldly come before the throne of grace and walk in the authority we have been given. This is a year for the bride to speak up. This will be a year where you rise above the storm and become the storm. Oof. This will be a year of breaking out of confinement, limitations, and seeing the end of the gag order. This will be a year to prophesy, worship, and be voices of truth. We are in the year of, the, of double doors opened by the keys of authority which have been given. Isaiah 22, 22, he's citing here again. We are in the year of the keys of David being revealed to the church and a year where we use them. We can't hide out or lay down in defeat anymore. It's time to shake our keys and open the doors the enemy thought he locked from our reach. In fact, right now, I prophesy, take hold of the key that you have, spiritually speaking, because you have a right to it given to you by God Take that key and just right now, as a prophetic act, lift it up, put it in front of you, pretend you're opening the door, and the door you are, are, you are unlocking that the enemy has locked is the door of freedom. Freedom in this nation, freedom of voice, freedom for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, even as the Constitution was written. Know that we must stand up and use what God has given us. Lest we, in the end, God forbid, blame God because we don't think he saved us or what happened to the nation and so forth. No, God needs his people to walk as he walked. This is why John says in 1 John, as he is, speaking of Jesus, so are we in this world. Now, if you ask saying, well, but, but, well we're not. Well, that's the problem. We are supposed to be. Oh, no one can be like Jesus. Have you read the Bible? What else is the reason he gave us the Holy Spirit? To transform us. Why are we not being transformed by the renewing of our mind? That we may know what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Romans 12, 2. It is because we are allowing ourselves to be conformed to the world. You have the power of choice. To choose life over death. Choose to walk. To follow. To serve. To worship. Jesus and he will back you up and he will transform you and God has raised many people just like those that I post about here many of them have as I've said many times before imparted into my life just by listening to their teachings and I chose to take a hold of that and it stirred up a passion and desire and I said I want that and I began to seek God so I have my own relationship with God and I balance it out and I couple it with listening to what others are learning from the Lord. So I can be receiving. I'm an open, an unopen vessel to receive from the Lord. And when I'm, when I, what I'm receiving, when I, once I understand by the Holy Spirit, I begin to apply it. Now, there are things I haven't applied, of course. But those things I have applied, you are a witness to it here. And now it's spreading. And some of you, even this morning, I, I woke up and someone else um, mentioned that they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit after listening to the video. Praise the Lord. 
That's, that's another person added that the Lord has touched. Praise God. Okay, so oof, let, let's finish this up. It's time to shake our keys and open the doors the enemy thought he locked from our reach. Even right now, God is breaking loose the muzzle on your voice in a new way. You think you have seen how God can use you, but you haven't seen anything yet. Oh, I receive that, Lord. I receive that, Lord, even how you have been using me. I declare I have seen nothing yet compared to what you will do. Thank you, Jesus. Speak the same thing over yourself. Amen. The whole painful process you have been through hasn't been wasted. Watch as God places a strong conviction and anointing upon you to speak the heart of God into this time of history. All right, this is the closing part right here. Oh, this is awesome. He, ha he lists different things for us to prophesy. So let's do that together. Oh, hallelujah. Let heaven bear witness now, all those on the earth and even those in hell, to what we are about to speak by the Spirit of the living God. Get excited. Get excited. Voices of truth arise. Now, voices of truth need to arise. We must prophesy. This is the first one. I prophesy. I have been anointed to demolish strongholds with my words and evict principalities. Now, I, I actually have to stop right there for something. Uh, any of you who have seen Cat Kerr and whatnot, even though Nate, uh, Nate Johnson has mentioned coming against principalities, I myself am going to tell you, do not, do not do anything that the Holy Spirit is not leading and guiding you to do. Okay? Principalities are very high up in the demonic, satanic hierarchy. And if God is not leading us to directly um, come attack them in the spiritual warfare, then do not do it. Because if God is not leading you, then there's a problem. Okay? So even though this said that, I apologize. I am, I am repeating what was spoken, but I must insert this bit of wisdom to you all right all right let's just go on please receive that take that well i prophesy this is a year where i will see haman hung by his own noose and i as i prophesy and worship okay now i'm saying this in the first person that way you can repeat it in the first person okay I prophesy this will be a year where the church shines like never before. I prophesy this will be a year of the resurgence of the Davidic worshipers and the releasing of songs of revival that have been held back in the last two years. I prophesy this will be a year where else our sound will shake cities and nations and the earth will know that we are here and the king of kings is with us i prophesy this will be a year where the demons that were bothering you me in 2021 will not be able to stand being around me because of the ferocity of my decrees I prophesy this will be a year of fresh utterance. Yes, Lord. As fresh coals are placed on my tongue by the Lord. Speak that over yourself. I prophesy this will be a year of the power and glory returning to the church in a way we have not seen. I prophesy this will be a year of righteous and bold lions being released into contentious situations on the earth. And the final one. I prophesy this is a year that changes the very trajectory of history as we know it. And yes, I wholeheartedly agree with that. 
for the glory of Jesus alone, be his voice. And that's where that ends. Hmm. I know that was a long one, but it was different. And that will speak to a certain group of people out there. All right. So, uh, again, let, let me know your thoughts. Let me know. You've probably, there's probably a group of you who followed Nate and Johnston. Um, Nate Johnston and Christy Johnston. And so you can leave comments about that. What spoke to you the most? Did you feel encouraged? Did you feel like the Lord is once again confirming that it's time for you to speak up? Now, just uh, another word of wisdom. Let the Lord lead you. Right? It doesn't mean all of a sudden you need to open up seven accounts and be on all these platforms. Right? Let the Lord lead you. Okay? I began on Instagram. He quickened me... Uh, 18 months before I began YouTube, he quickened me to do that, and I hesitated, so that was on me. But God is merciful. Look what he's doing. God is merciful. So I don't I don't pay attention to that. I don't try to bring myself down. That's from the past. That's the devil's back there, and he can just shut up because I'm going forward to Jesus, right? And that's, what you, that's your, what your attitude should be. He's the one calling you from the back, talking about your past. And Jesus, again, is just saying, come. Come on. God's already walked. Jesus has already walked the path for you. He's at your destiny. And he's just saying, come on, follow my footsteps. Follow the path I've already laid out for you. With love, he's calling you. No matter what you've done, with love, he's calling you. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Just draw near and go forth and fulfill your, for, fulfill your destiny. Amen. All right. So don't forget to subscribe. If you're not subscribed, hit the like button, leave a comment. And remember, we do have a contest. And um, I, I, I'm not a fan that uh, YouTube is changing up everything because by now, to be quite honest, we should be nearing, we should have been nearing 10,000 subscribers, but we are still hovering just over eight because the enemy is attacking. That just means God is speaking on this channel. And he's working. So the enemy's threatened. And he should be. Because he's going down. In your life and in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I will see you very soon in the next video. Whenever you see this, God bless you.